my lovely, lovely imps, welcome to yet another episode of Drama Mama. On Drama Mama, we pick internet drama that is interesting, and I let you know what's going on. We always bring all the receipts, we try to get the idea of both sides of the story, and then we make a decision for ourselves as to our conclusions about the drama. It's a fun show. We've done many other episodes. All of them are up on the Demon Mama uh, uh, channel, which you can subscribe to and like right now. This episode of Drama Mama is going to be about the rise and catastrophic fall of the Reddit anti-work community. Oh, it started back up again. Now, um, let's start with the basics, okay? What is Reddit? No, I'm just kidding. Um, Reddit is a silly, stupid website. It's a place that nobody should go um, unless you have a really niche interest. And <sighs> Okay. Reddit has a history of fucking things up really bad, okay? And let me tell you why Reddit has an issue with fucking things up. Uh, some of you may have heard the meme, we did it, Reddit. Anybody ever heard of the of that meme? Uh, anybody sound off and chat if you've heard of the of the we did it Reddit meme? Um, yeah, I'm sure almost everybody has. Even if you don't go to Reddit, you've probably heard of that meme. The we did it Reddit is a joke um, about how Reddit users have not just Reddit users, but the website of Reddit, the way that the website works. It's a content aggregator with a really like uh, a really complicated upvote system. But it tends to lead to a lot of uh, bandwagoning and brigading, okay? So, uh, yeah, the famous example, as Gayfesh in chat brings up, is when Reddit led to uh, false accusations, a severe false accusations about who the Boston bomber was. Yeah, that Boston bomber, the guy who, you know, set bombs off at the Boston Marathon. They... Red, Reddit detectives, um, keyboard detectives, just random fuckheads on the internet, uh, accused a guy of being the bomber, and they were, like, so unbelievably wrong, and it fucking ruined his life. Like, completely. Um, the guy, like, got fucking cops showed up at his place, he got fucking questioned, he had news media people going after him, and that's where, that's, like, sort of the origin point of the term, we did it, Reddit, as in, Yay, we solved the crime. By solving the crime, they mean fucking everything up and making things way, way worse. So Reddit has this problem where because of the way the site works, people get really hyped about stuff and then they lose themselves in the hype and they make terrible, terrible, terrible mistakes. And this has happened over and over and over again on Reddit. Reddit has a bit of a reputation for this. Now, I want to be fair to Reddit because... Not that I care about the company, but there are people who are going to pop up in the chat and say, yeah, but Reddit has these great communities. True. Small communities on Reddit can be super helpful. For example, there's a, there's a, actually a, a, like a rather large community that I can think of off the top of my head. That's super great. It's called makeup addiction. Okay. It's a, it's a subreddit that has very strict moderation and it is all about talking about how to get cheap good quality makeup and how to use it fucking sick you go there they have guides they have everything all in one place really cool there's a, apparently the hiking subreddit is really really good um apparently um some of the like uh some some games subreddits are pretty fucking good um yeah it's uh you know um so there are some things that reddit is good for okay um, and there's some funny reddits too. For example, uh, r196 is a mean, a, a massive, uh, meme subreddit that has, is full of trans memes for some reason. And it's pretty funny. Um, but again, strictly moderated. Um, anyway, what is anti-work? That's the bigger question. Uh, I was sort of joking about giving an intro to Reddit, but I felt like it would be fun to describe why we did it. Reddit is going to come up a lot in this conversation. What is anti-work? Anti-work in the context of what we're talking about is a subreddit that formed some time ago on Reddit. It's been around quite a while, but this year it exploded. Okay. Like, I mean, 
fucking exploded. It went from having like a couple hundred or a couple thousand users, tiny little subreddit, to having millions of users. And it's kind of understandable, right? You're like, okay, well, a, a, a work-related Reddit would gain popularity in the middle of a economic disaster of uh, of unbelievable proportions. Now, I'm not going to sit here and argue about the economic out, like you know, fallout of COVID. The reality is that millions of people are out of work. Millions of people are working jobs that have become increasingly cruel. Millions of people have found themselves in danger at their jobs. So it makes sense to me that these that a subreddit that's against work would become very popular. But the actual ideas that built that subreddit, like being anti-work, is um is like a bigger idea. There's there's something more than a subreddit there. In fact, um there have been anti-work thinkers uh and writers for a very long time. You might know of a couple of them. Um there was this really small uh niche guy named Karl Marx, okay, who had a lot of problems with the way that work and labor is handled in our society. And uh, he he would say sort of these ridiculous ideas, like um, that, that humans would be better off if they could spend most of their time pursuing art and joy and happiness instead of working in a factory and getting crushed by a giant gear. Um, and uh, as it turns out, that's kind of a popular idea because, uh, you know, people don't really like uh, spending their entire life um, in a, a, a sweatshop uh, getting crushed by gear. But you know what they also don't like spending their entire life in? An Amazon warehouse getting hit by a tornado because they were literally locked in by Amazon security. You know what else they don't like? Having to piss in bottles because they're being watched over by AI uh, designed to make you work harder to the degree that you become penalized out of your already low pay if you take a bathroom break. So all of these things, you know, it turns out has inspired a lot of people over the course of history to be kind of against this idea of work. And some people take this position to a more extreme spot and say, actually, guys, work is really bad. And um, I can understand that position. And we're going to talk about that a little bit before we jump into the drama part of this because i think that's an idea that uh despite the complete and utter collapse of this subreddit um and and uh movement i very hesitate to call it that but despite the collapse of that um uh, is an interesting thing to understand so many of you here are probably thinking okay 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 yeah work sucks but somebody's got to do it right that's the neat part no, they don't. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, we understand that. We recognize that, like, there are things that we have to do to survive, right? You gotta, you have to stand up and pick up a piece of food or whatever. But that's not really what work, how work plays out in any of our societies, in any of society that we know right now. Uh, the way that work unfolds and 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 manifests itself in our society is as this highly coercive endeavor that leaves us disconnected from the things that we love that takes us away from the people that we love and puts us under the employ of other people um people who we may not even like but that we nonetheless have to work for because they have all the coconuts um is is a, is a way to put it um and and uh and it's not so easy to just solve that by making a workplace better, right? Because uh, think of it like this. Let me give you an example, okay? What if every day you had to work for eight hours every single day for the rest of your life? However, when you showed up at your workplace, you would get an injection in the arm that would make you trip balls for eight hours. And then you would go home. But you have to show up for eight hours every single day. Even though you might have a good time tripping balls for eight hours, you are probably going to at some point go, I would rather trip balls at home. 
I would rather have sex with my wife or my husband at home while tripping balls. I would rather, why do I have to give, why, why, even if the workplace is good, why do I have to give eight hours of my life, the most finite resource that we all have, time, why do I have to give those eight hours to somebody else? Why? And that's the question uh, that is at the heart of anti-work is why do we, why do we demand one another to do things that are uncomfortable and hard with such an incredible ferocity? Why do we defend this uh, insistence that work is something that's supposed to be venerated, that work isn't something that should be seen as perhaps a necessity blocking us from survival, an obstacle to be overcome, but instead something that's worshipped as a character trait or as a uh, a virtue. And uh, and that is, like I said, that is sort of the main thrust of the of 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 anti-work thought, the idea that no, we shouldn't venerate this. Work is miserable and difficult. It it makes us unhappy. It breaks our bodies and our minds sometimes. And there might be good times to do work. There might be reasons why we might decide that we need to do work, but we should be able to choose that and we shouldn't force that on other people. Does that make sense? And it's funny because when you when I frame it this way, it probably seems like a rather inviting idea, right? Um, a lot of people encounter anti-work ideas on Twitter and immediately scoff and go, nothing would get done in your society, blah, blah, blah. But when I ask you, why should we build societies where we force other people and then therefore become forced ourselves to do a lot of things that we don't like or might not even have any desire to do or might not even benefit from. And I think it's important to ask those questions. Are there some things that may we may determine uh, are, are inevitable that must be done or whatever? Great, that's fine. But that's for us to recognize and conclude as beings working with one another. Yeah, wagey, wagey, get in the cagey, exactly. That's the, men that's the mentality that a lot of our um, society has towards this sort of stuff. Why does a mother of two have to work three jobs and die with debt? Great question. Now, as you can see, our society is so far from even good workplaces that a lot of people try to shortcut the conversation entirely by being like, oh, you're just some sort of utopian. You just want to lay around on your couch and smoke weed. True. I would love to lay around on my couch and smoke weed. The funny thing is, actually, I work quite a lot even when I am smoking weed and laying on my couch. But whatever. Um, but why not? Why? Why should? Why should? Why should we assume this as a an absolute necessity? And does this assumption, as of a necessity, does this leave us in a position where we are willing to look the other way as we build a society that is f functional slavery? Wage slavery is real, and we all know it. Anybody who, who's, who's ever come up against a bill that they can't pay, anybody who's ever gotten hounded by, uh, by, by uh, you know, debt collectors, anybody who's ever been evicted, anybody who's ever uh, been hit with a late fee from your bank, which is pretty much everybody in this chat, you know that at the end of the day, there really is. There might not be a literal gun pointing at your head, but there is. There is a gun pointing at you that says, you better motherfucking work. And you better go in to your miserable job. And you better work for Jeff Bezos so that he can shoot another rocket into space. And so that you can go home and eat Hot Pockets. And you're going to do it or you're going to die. Anyway, now, I've, now that I've laid out the case for... Um, now that I've now that I've laid out the case for what um, anti work is, now I need to talk about the anti work subreddit. Okay, so this subreddit again, massive, massive viral success, um, just fucking in incredible, uh, uh, you know, incredible growth. Fact is, we've talked about anti work, we've covered the rise of anti work, and we were excited about it. And I told people in my videos about anti work, guys. 
don't get too excited, okay? It's cool as fuck. It's really great to judge the sentiment and to see that millions of young people are seriously, seriously pissed off about the work conditions. They fucking hate their bosses as they should because their bosses are standing between them and a good quality of life. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so this, this subreddit has, you know, kind of blew up and then something happened and we're going to watch what happened. Okay. So anti-work was doing real good until a mod decided from the mod team decided to accept an interview from Fox News. Okay. So let me tell you what's wrong with this move, okay? Fox News, for those of you who really aren't into the loop, uh, maybe if you don't know anything about American media, I don't know. I think I think even people overseas know about Fox News. Fox News is the is a far right propaganda channel in the United States that brands themselves as news, but that is not news. It is. It is 24-hour fucking right-wing propaganda. It is the mouthpiece of every single Republican president. It is also the biggest news channel, the single biggest, or sorry, single most watched news channel in the United States. Very bad, okay? Uh, it is... They are incredibly hostile to, to liberals, let alone leftists. They spend most of their time fear-mongering about communists, trans people, etc., etc., etc. And they have no qualms about uh, using an interview to torpedo their political opponents. So if you are involved in some sort of movement unless you are the most chattest, charismatic, and well-trained individual, I highly recommend never accepting an interview from Fox News because Fox News' goal will be to torpedo you. They will find all the dirt they can on you. They will bring it up. They will use the worst photos of you they can find. They will make you seem like the worst person imaginable. And unfortunately... Some people are more vulnerable to this than others. And in this particular case, the mod uh, who accepted the interview, let's just say, does not have the, the most, uh, the, the cleanest past, okay? They've been on social media a long time. They've been very public about some of their private problems and endeavors. And that resulted in an interview we're going to watch right now, which was a disaster, okay? Um, yeah, uh, it's, it's bad in a lot of ways. Now, according to, I have attained an incredible amount of logs uh, that are almost impossible to get through all of them. I've, I've been given a lot of logs uh, from the Reddit and from the Discord it, it appears that the original mod team was strongly, strongly uh, uh, disadvising this individual from doing the interview. But this individual chose to do the interview anyway. Um, and it didn't go well. And the important thing to take away, I'm going to say this now, and we're going to review this after, is to recognize that a Reddit cannot be a social movement and is not a social movement. A Reddit can be a, a, a barometer for people's moods. It can indicate viral interest. It can, it can serve as a hub to share information, but a Reddit is not a movement and never will be. Now, that that's out of the way, let us tune in to this little interview. And I warn you in advance, this is indeed quite cringe. Um, just so you know, uh, just be ready. It's gonna, it's gonna hurt. So, here we go. This is titled, Anti-Work Reddit Mod versus Fox News. Okay? Here we go. Over 1.6 million subscribers. Joining me now is the person...
One minute, we're gonna have to adjust the sound here real quick. Let me boost up that sound just a bit. Who operates this anti-work group, Doreen Ford. All right, so Doreen, why do you like the idea of being home, not working, but still getting paid by corporate America? Yeah, uh, so there's some misconceptions about the movement. Um, so we're a movement where we want to reduce the amount of work that people feel like they they're forced to to do um and so we want to still put in effort we want to put in labor um but we don't want to necessarily uh be in a position where we feel trapped you know um you just quoted from office space where that person feels very trapped in their job i think we're calling for a society where there's less of that um but yeah absolutely people still want to do things they just want to do things where they feel rewarded and they feel like they're in a good spot in their life uh and that their job respects them and stuff like that um you know there's varying so you're on the, on so doreen but you're not being forced to work this isn't this isn't slave labor you, you've you've applied for a job you've agreed to now notice the maneuvering okay what you're seeing right now is you are seeing the maneuvering so the first question is basically getting getting this person to give them the rope okay you ever heard the the turn of phrase uh giving someone the rope to hang themselves with that has nothing to do with suicide it's a it's a terminology where you let someone talk so that you can find flaws in what they're saying and you can jump on those and that's what just happened see this interviewer opened it with a very open question you just want to sit at home and do nothing don't you and then, unfortunately, instead of strongly rejecting that and being like, that is a, that is a total mischaracterization of our views, uh, instead of rejecting that, this person just kind of went along with it. The terms and conditions of the employment, and, you know, you can walk away from that job at any time and quit. So I don't understand yeah, really what this is about, sure. except it sounds like maybe people are just being lazy. Are you encouraging people sure, to be so. lazy? See? Do you see? Now he's setting up the framing. Um, so I think laziness is um, a virtue in a society where... Now this is where it goes bad. American society is obsessed with work. To, sit, to respond, are you encouraging people to be lazy by saying, I think laziness is a virtue. People don't understand what that means. That's a big fucking misstep. Where people constantly want you to be productive 24 seven and it's good to have rest. Um, that doesn't mean you should be resting all the time or not putting effort into things that you care about. But I think one of the- What do you think is like a work good work day? How many hours is, is you know, a solid work day in, in your ideal right. society? Uh, sure, I mean, I think as much as people want. I mean, I personally uh, work, I have, I have like a 20, 25 hour work weeks, which I think is fairly good. Um, so I would like less work hours. Um, and what I do you do, Doreen? Go, oh, I'm a dog walker. A dog walker. Okay. Yes. And how, uh, yeah, so how I old are you, if you don't mind me asking? Sure, I'm 30. You're 30. Okay. Do you see what's being done here? Oh, you're a do oh, you're a 30 year old dog walker. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right. Hmm. Do you see his reactions are telling the audience what to think here? And let's be real, there's nothing wrong. There's absolutely nothing wrong with being a dog walker at 30. But on Fox News, you don't want to be presented as the 30-year-old dog walker who thinks laziness is good. Do you see how bad do you see how bad of a setup this is? Do you see how outmaneuvered Doreen has been? And is there something you want to do besides being a dog walker? Do you aspire to do anything more than dog walking? Or Listen is that, to that kind of your your pinnacle? Uh, I, I love working with dogs. If I had to do this for the rest of my life, you know, I wouldn't be super complaining. You know, dogs are wonderful animals. Uh, but I'm, I would love to teach. Uh, I would love to, um, you teach. know, uh, work with work with people and well, stuff like that. What would that. you yeah. teach, Doreen? Uh, a philosophy, mostly. Philosophy. Just introduction to philosophy, critical thinking, reason, stuff like that. Okay. Well, I would love to take your class, Doreen. I would just be taking notes the whole time and you know what a professor is a very similar schedule than something that you're imagining so I think that actually might might work perfectly for you listen 
torpedoed. But f fuck this host, yeah, but it's Fox News. This guy does this every single day. And Doreen here literally doesn't n realize what's even happening. Doreen is not... Doreen is a... a not not a, P a PR-trained individual. Doreen is not a debater. Doreen is not a rhetorician. Doreen is a seemingly very, very genuine person who's going up against a... This guy's got fucking makeup on. This guy's got a whole team. He's got a, producers in his ear. You can see his fucking ear wire here. This is such a bad setup. This should never have been accepted. Yeah, this is Jesse Wall. Yeah, Jesse Waters, who's the assistant to Bill O'Reilly. Yeah. Uh, I think this might not be the greatest idea, but who am I to judge? To each their own, they say. It's a free country. Sure. Not everything's yeah. uh, free, you know. but it is a free country. <laughs> Thank you so much. Sure. We got to run. We got to pay the bills. Do you see that ending? Oh, we got to pay the bills there. Mm. And of course, they follow that segment up by just totally shitting on the anti-work movement. But you can understand why this person who walked onto there and presented this as a movement... Um, yeah, oof size, very large. So, uh, 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 you know, Doreen went on there with the goal of advocating for a movement counter to the advice of everyone involved in the subreddit. And what this resulted in, by the way, is the most watched national news network in America all having their ire pointed directly at the anti-work subreddit. You can completely imagine just how many eyes were actually on this fuck a fucking lot of people a fucking lot of people psychosocialism says imagine if you had been there or vosh or zan we would have crushed them no we wouldn't have that's the secret no we wouldn't have you can't win it is all actually you can but it is very difficult okay it is extremely difficult to win on Fox News because they control everything. They can shut you off early. They can cut off your mic. They can play footage of you as a child falling into mud right before you come on. They can call you a pedophile the moment you turn off your camera and step away. They have producers on you. They can do background checks on you. No. None of us would have done that much better. Oh, we would have done better, but not. it wouldn't have mattered. Yeah, and if we did well, they just wouldn't air the segment. Exactly, Xander Hall. See, Zan gets it. They wouldn't air the segment. They've done this all the time. These are, This is a propaganda network, people. Okay? Going on there in the first place is a mistake. Unless you have some real big brain shit planned... Which does happen, by the way. Uh, there was, I remember, for example, once a guy from, um, I think he worked for GameSpot, the magazine, like the gaming magazine. One point, um, this guy from GameSpot, this was like way back in the early 2000s. He went on there uh, and argued in favor of like violent video games. And he pulled a trick because he went on there to say that he, he told them he was going to be critical of violent video games, and then he just said, nah, guys, violent video games are sick, and you guys are all just being giant babies about it. And that aired. And so he got them by fooling them. But you can't always do that. And that's very hard to pull off, and you have to have press credentials to pull something off like that. Yeah, Sam Cedar's been on there before, but you have to be super careful. And remember, Sam Cedar has been in the news industry for 15 fucking years. Unfortunately, it doesn't end there, okay? Because what happened after that interview is that everybody realized it was a bad interview. We all know. Everybody, we can see it. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. That interview is a colossal failure. It is, it is nuclear cringe that makes even the sturdiest cringe uh, cringe aficionados uh, uh, waver, okay? 
And what this resulted in is millions upon millions of hostile users flooding into anti-work. So anti-work, of course, went on lockdown. And when it went on lockdown, the mod team panicked. Okay? Like really bad. Like they panicked really, really bad. And as this happened, all of the mods all of a sudden became targets. So think of it like this, okay? Here, I'm gonna, we're going to do a little bit of, you know, we haven't done any drawing recently. Let's do a little bit of a draw real quick. Can I just like give you an idea of what happens, right? Okay, here we got our little thing here, all right? So here, here we'll call it blue here. Here is your little subreddit. Yay, happy little circle subreddit, okay? And you've got your little mod dudes. Let's get the little mods. We'll, call, we'll put them in green. We'll put them in olive drab. They look like soldiers. Here you go. Here's your mods. Boom, 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 boom. You know? Your mods are like, hey, we're keeping the place nice and clean. We're keeping it safe. Do, do, do. You know, we defer any raids that might come our way. Then, Fox happens. And thousands of people are plowing into this space. Okay? No, not even thousands. Let's say, realistically, millions. Millions of people. And then this gets locked, okay? So they get locked out of this. And what that means is that instead, you have your fucking mods as the only visible names. All your mods and admins are the only people that all of these raging fucking hogs coming from Fox News can see. So every single one of the mods is suddenly being put under scrutiny. Their posts, their social media is being is being uh, paged through. Their, uh, their, their worst posts, all of their cringe is being shared on all the Donald Trump subreddits. It is bad news, okay? Do you see? You can understand this, right? Millions of people can only see what they think are a bunch of pro-laziness, anti-American moderators. And Doreen was one of them. So the person who was on that on that interview was one of them. And unfortunately, a lot of personal stuff uh, uh, got outed about Doreen, okay? Um, including, um, this is a screenshot from this person's Facebook, okay? The person accusing me of serial rape and I were involved in sexual conduct. This scenario involved alcohol on their part, but I had been informed. You can see where this is going. I am not going to read this out on the channel because it literally isn't relevant. But th this is the person, Doreen Claire, is the person who went on Fox. And this was discovered almost immediately afterwards. And this person was, by Fox News, framed as the face of this movement, okay? Yeah, I'm not reading the whole thing because it, it literally doesn't matter. It is a, a incredibly messy situation that I can't even begin to sort. There's no way, there's no reason, there's no reason for me to even dip into it. It's just some, it, it's incomprehensible. But what I'm saying is, is that this person, this mod put themselves, not only themselves, but the entire mod team in an incredibly vulnerable position. And this was found out immediately. So, what happened next? Well, that's where it gets really weird, okay? Because uh, the mods started fighting with each other, which makes sense, right? All of the mods uh, are are um, all the mods are very stressed. Some of them are being targeted. Some of them have had their Facebooks uh, fucking exposed. Some of them are getting doxxed. Uh, there's like you know considerable um, you know just 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 massive mess on all of these individual people. And so they start fighting with each other. You know, um, which is uh, kind of understandable, right? Um, let me see. Hold on. Hold on a second. Let me bring up my, my little source, my little thing I have here. Uh, here we go. 
Uh, yeah, so this gets really messy really fast. Now, thankfully, some other Redditors over at subreddit drama have, have been sort of documenting what actually happened in order. So we're going to go through these posts um, as to, as to sort of establish what happened in the immediate follow-up follow to the interview. So as you can see, here is the sorry post from, um, from Antiwork, which... Uh, let me explain. Let me see if I can explain this because it gets a little confusing. After the interview, mods are freaking out. Some of the mods decide that the correct decision is to post uh, a a a apology post, um, and it 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 does not go well. Okay, so they try to issue like a um, uh, a a a apology post. And, and it, it does not go well. It's not taken well. And also, there wasn't mod unity on this. Some of the mods were apologizing. Other mods had gone completely missing. Some of the mods were saying, Hey, D Doreen did fine. Shut the fuck up. And... <sighs> that's when it starts to get really strange. Because this other subreddit called Work Reform Work Reform started getting involved. And that's a little strange, isn't it? See, Work Reform has a very different approach. And uh, you know, they believe that work is good, but that it needs to be reformed. And un unfortunately, um the top mod of The top mod of work reform works for a bank, and so did other mods. In fact, one of the mods of work reform was a C-suite, a, 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 a C-suite employee of a regional bank. Now, a lot of these have been deleted or removed entirely. Um, but you can probably imagine how sussy it is that a work reform subreddit swoops right in and says, oh, hey, hey, let us help you. We need to help you. You're having a hard time. Come on. We, we don't like work. You don't like work. Come on in. Let, let us come on in. And unfortunately, some of the mods on the anti-work team thought that that was, you know, fine. And so what ended up happening was the, uh, uh, the, 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 the subreddit started inviting new mods at a rapid pace. And those mods were conflicting with the old mods, some of whom were resigning, others of whom were holding their ground. And this was the result. So after, so, Anti-work locks down and the mods go into complete and utter chaos. And then um, on, let's see, what was this day? This was on the 27th of January. It reopened. So, so anti-work opens back up all of a sudden out of nowhere. And this is the statement that they have. Okay, we're going to look at that statement real quick. Here we go. The statement, statement R anti-work transparency we will now focus on more transparency regarding media we are going in the short-term future not accept any media interviews and we will ask the community on feedback regarding whether we will accept an interview or what kind of media outlets are outright banned however at this point we, we still have past interviews that were done but not released namely kyoto news japan new york times fast company bayer bear Bayerischer Rundfunk and fuck a uh, fucking German place. Uh, Kim Kimezuke in general was reading feedback and was setting up anti work media, a counter platform for anti work, so we have our own media. Uh oh. However, the project was not started to begin with. You, Kimeku. Kimizuke just started the subreddit and sort of forgot about it later as an in internal chat other things unrelated were discussed at the time and they were a new moderator so this person did not want to make severe decisions to continue the spirit and the project was abandoned the same time the subreddit was created 
They thought the name, however, should be reserved, so this user did not delete anti-work media subreddit. This person was looking at German media, uh, and they tried to make the movement more international, and they wrote an interview, interview inquiry to the ND party, a newspaper associated with Die Linke in Germany. We're not getting into that. There has been no reply regarding the interview inquiry that was trying to be set up. So let's just summarize this. A completely new moderator, nobody knows who this person is, says, hey, guys, I think we should make our own media platform. And the mods go, oh, yeah, that's a fucking great idea. Let's do it. And then this random fucking who knows who could be a kid, could be a fucking geriatric old man, could be a fucking ISIS terrorist for all you know just books it so now there's a fucking lo now anti-work media is locked down there's nobody doing it and the mod team was trusting them to do it which is stupid the experience of past interviews volunteers that so far were interviewed had good experiences and weren't presented or set up in bad faith one such example can be the recent bbc article Who's this person and why did they do interviews? Hello, I am a 21 years old male, long-term unemployed and anarchist. Oh boy. Wait, this is written by Kimizuke? Is this? Is this post by that person? Wait, it doesn't say. Hold on. Posted by post left anarchist. Wait. Is that who it was? Hold on, I didn't know that. Hold on, let's see. Was it posted by Kimizuke? Oh my god. So he's writing about himself in the third person. Oh, their account is deleted. That's why I couldn't see it. Yeah, their account was fucking deleted. Great. Nice. So this person writing in the third person about themselves trying to clear their name. Hello, I am a 21 years old male, long-term unemployed, and an a anarchist. Okay. This, first of all, it is very difficult to be long-term unemployed at 21 years old. Being 21 years old is not exactly the best front of a movement, okay? I've been surfing this subreddit since 2020, and it helped me in my journey when I, be when I started to begin to be unemployed. When I began to read this subreddit, I was a leftist liberal, namely a social democrat. I've been reading some of the recommended literature, for example, Bob Black's Abolition of Work, and have been radicalized to an anarchist. This is a terrible way. This is a terrible first post. Okay, guys? This is the first post that was posted after it reopened after that nightmare. So millions of users who were locked out and have been trying to follow the drama, the first thing they see is this fucking post. This is astroturfed. Dude, there's no fucking way to know. Okay, we'll get to that. We'll get to that, okay? I was randomly invited by a former mod that quit one week ago. Holy shit. Named one day it will be Daisy. And after thinking for some while about it, I accepted it. I'm aware that this movement is fluid. There are people with all kinds of ideologies, history, and I've been trying to say exactly that in the written interview for the New York Times. This person, 21 years old, invited to be a mod one week ago, and is writing an interview for the for the New York Times immediately after that disaster. I've said that I merely see myself as a volunteer, just as another anti-worker as you are reading this. From now, I'll personally plan to not do interviews in the short-term future, and I'm open to feedback. I'm going as long as nothing else is planned to be the noob librarian of the anti-work library. So far, I've got one request to read through a sort of research paper and asked in the internal chat about thoughts after reading it through to myself for about an hour. I'll be revisiting this piece and think again whether to add it. What the fuck, dude? This is like, this is like high schooler level. I read a report and I might add it to our library. Keep in mind that this has... At that time, this post was pinned to the top of a subreddit with 1.7 million users and the eyes of Fox News on it. And this is what they're writing. I've always tried to listen to feedback, especially from people that are the longest active in this subreddit. I've been trying to implement some and failed in some. For example, it was suggested by a user to make anti-work counter media, namely that we're doing our own sort of media to counter any wrong messages by news outlets. You can't. It's too late. 
Fox News is the biggest news. You're not going to be able to counter anything. Vermin, I missed you too. Don't worry. We're going for quite a while. Don't worry. I'm happy you're back. However, this was too big of a project for me to take on alone and other and didn't tell others about the subreddit I created back then because I was still too new and didn't want to make any big changes. Like I said, I'm very passionate to keep anti-work spirit and movement alive and have been personally investing more than 10 hours moderating this subreddit in the last two days. Wow. 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 To the point of sleep deprivation. I'll be taking care of that after today by having a good night's sleep, and I hope you continue to enjoy your stay in anti-work. Oh, this is so bad. I'm going to go take a nap, everybody. To counter the wave of the brigaders, we currently have submissions and comments strict in crowd control. We're looking... This is a bad thing to admit. We are crowd controlling the comments. We are currently looking how things work out and trying to reduce the level as soon as it's comfortable to do so. For newcomers, we hope you enjoy your stay, but be patient as we're still trying to slowly start up the subreddit again. Before we locked it, we also had crowd, co crowd control enabled just one hour before locking it. Nobody knows what this means. That held the comments for review in the mod queue. Majority of times, we did not. For clarity... It was at one point so bad that we had four mods just looking at new submissions. Kimizuke also personally looked through the post history of submissions they removed and looked whether they were active participants of the community. Kimizuke said the vast majority they banned were brigaders. The majority of them were from one particular subreddit. Any person that was not a brigader should try to apply for an unban. This is madness. This is basically, it's busted. You should not have unlocked it if this was the situation. Before the Fox News incident, we were planning to sticky a submission about searching for new mods. Due to a few mods quitting, we are definitely going to search for new mods in the near future. When things went well, we temporarily added some moderators from the mod reserve that we asked a few radical questions about social justice movements and the biggest issue in their country so we could select appropriate moderators, making sure not to change drastically the spirit of the subreddit. Hey, uh, <clears throat> we have a stringent policy of bringing on only people who will tell me that they are a liberal that they are a leftist well they said they were a leftist guys this is the most reddit shit again i told you the the downfall of anti-work is because of soy it is the concentrated reddit soy energy that brought this whole thing down redditors my god redditors for fucking christ reddit talks every month we plan to do a reddit talks we had two so far this is meaningless useless oh boy here we go the fox news incidents regarding abolish work we are planning to remove her from the moderation duties and have contacted the admins for the removal of her as a mod we thank her for building up the anti-work movement not a movement but regarding the past incidents we decided as a majority to remove her timeline of the fox news incident Day one, we got an interview from a Fox News reporter working for the Fox News reporter. Those who were aware of the interview beforehand advised against it. Day one continues. We talked about putting up a sticky for mod searching, highlighted events in the mod mail, blah, blah, blah. Day two, two interviews have been declined instead of Fox News. Shortly before the Fox News interview happened, the mod team was made aware of it by Abolish Work. That's Doreen. Or, yeah, Doreen. Uh, the following media outlets were declined. TV Tokyo and Bloomberg. Bloomberg uh, or Abolish Work had a conflicting schedule, which is why Bloomberg was, was declined. She said at the time she had an interview at 948, and as far as Kimizuke can remember, one hour prior to Abolish Work wanted to prepare for the interview, such as taking a shower. Holy fucking shit. Maybe, it, maybe she took a shower. That's great. Do you see? And but remember, remember, just, just so you all remember, this was the first thing that anybody saw after anti-work locked down. May, it was that, oh, she wanted to take a shower. Holy shit. Moderating the day of the Fox News incident. We were about 10 mods. 10 mods is all they had. 
10 fucking random mods, some of which had only been added a week before. We were working for more than eight hours through the mod queue and the subreddit in general, trying not to let it get closed. Kimizuke personally wrote the new FAQ, asked for feedback, and was several times declined to post it. But as we were looking at what we could do, the FAQ was posted. So a a 21-year-old, a 21-year-old who just joined the Reddit who just joined the mod team a week earlier, wrote and posted an official FAQ. 10 mods for 1.7 million users. However, we had no crowd control on, um, and we knew brigaders were going to control misinformation, such as that we had a vote in the community and we no longer would do media interviews. This is meaningless internal nonsense. We were frustrated as mocking pictures of Doreen went around and the submission brigading per minute kept increasing. We had no other way out to but to close the subreddit. Okay. So now we need to address the elephant in the room. Okay? Guys, big surprise. Okay? Big surprise. But there's a lot of trans people on the anti-work subreddit. Okay? Turns out, you know, trans people really struggle with employment. Reason is, there's a lot of discrimination, okay? A lot of trans people in there, okay? A lot of the trans people on the mod team. One of those trans people was the person who did the Fox News interview, okay? And that trans person immediately had their entire life, all of their photos from Facebook, all of their social media, blown open to 4chan, Stormfront, Kiwi Farms, Okay? That's the elephant in the room. The transphobia that flooded in because of this interview is unbelievable. Okay? Okay? Nightmare scenario. Nightmare. Okay? And remember, that Facebook post was one of the first things that people discovered. Okay? The Facebook post about the, 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 the fucked up sexual assault incident. Trans woman fucks up an interview on Fox News and the first thing people find is a post about sexual assault? Do I really need to say anything else? How fucking horrible that is? Genuinely a nightmare scenario I can't even imagine. And guess what? They talk about it here. Meanwhile, we don't know enough to feel comfortable making a statement about alleged sexual assaults. The individual in question has been removed from the moderation team by collective decision. We are waiting on the admin removing her officially. We would be glad if you would stop the witch hunt surrounding the moderator team. A few moderators have quit already due to personal reasons affected from them receiving harassment. You think? The majority of moderators are still active, and as mentioned before, we're going to look for new moderators, preferably people who have good standing in this community. And then, of course, the users are not happy about this. But I, I want to just point out, probably the worst thing that you could possibly do after uh, one of your mods is getting totally bombarded is make some sort of stupid immediate public statement talking about their sexual assault allegations. This is called, this is a level, I mean, again... What do you expect from a person who's only been a mod for one week and is 21 years old and obviously does not have a whole lot of skill for writing? No offense, but this thing was written like shit. So that person is doing the PR for the reopening of a 1.7 million user subreddit that just had an interview on BBC that was just covered in 60 minutes and that just had a disastrous Fox News interview. Holy shit. Is it bad? Holy shit. Also, here's something that a user said, okay? It's becoming pretty obvious that this reopen is largely because work reform was growing by mat by 300k users overnight in the absence of this. I can't help but think this is just another desperate grab at relevance for a handful of people. How long till we're seeing Patreon grifts? Anybody working on a book they're going to try and sell? 
Why on earth were you people going for interviews? Why the fuck were you going for interviews? Why do you think you're leading a movement? You guys are ass clowns. This reads like they want to turn the movement into a business. The comments are disastrous. Holy shit, look, the comments are just a slaughter. S just a s absolute fucking slaughter. Okay? He's gone. Then, that mod, uh, there was a petition to sub, to shut down the sub. Then, the person who wrote that, so Kamizuke, or Kimizuke, the person who wrote that post, then resigned and, and, and ditched. And now, nobody actually knows who's running the subreddit anymore. Take a look at this. Here's a, here's a great example from the mega thread. Meanwhile, on anti-work, users are suspicious as to the new mod's identity, and some users complain about a self-appointed spokesperson being a 21-year-old long-term unemployed anarchist who keeps removing people's posts. Bands are running amok on anti-work. Band Spree is going, uh, going wild. Band Spree is apparently the work of the former head mod's roommate. So Doreen's roommate is, is banning people. Anti-work new is a shit show. Mods have completely given up. New mods have been added. Looks like they're recruiting from known Reddit mod pools, including work reform. So now you see, now out of desperation, work reform takes over the anti-work subreddit. Damn! Hmm! Fuck! Look, look at that! You know what we call that? That's a coup, baby. That's a motherfucking coup. That's, that's, a, that's a slick move. You, 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 you take over and get your moderators into the radical subreddit. Fuck it up. Damn. And we're not even, we're not even, we're not even into the wildest shit. Okay. Here's where the logs of the mods were discussing incest. I find that really interesting. I'll have to think about this some more. Thank you for replying. I'm new to this whole incest thing, but I can't imagine walking in on my parents having sex, let alone on them walking in on me. Hmm. Yikes. Restructuring and recent events. Hello, Chaos. I'm a new mod who elected to write this post with what is left of our mod team reviewing and approving it. Hopefully you find this sticky mega thread in good taste. This is this thread is made to address the many concerns raised in the wake of the Fox interview. Yeah. So here's more shit like this. Here we go. Kimizuke has stepped down. Fuzzy has stepped down. We removed abolish work and all links leading to them. We are going to clean house. We have two new temporary mods with loads of prior experience to help with fire starting and brigading. Now this is where it's going to get really interesting. Okay. Get, you ready? You all ready? Pay attention. Okay. Listen to this. Okay. With all that being said, we hope that those of you genuinely interested in improving our collective material conditions to a state beyond serfdom will continue in the discussion. As for a little bit about me, I've been on Reddit for nine years, and I'm a top mod for our rape, a subreddit for rape victims, and for our contrapoints. I specialize in disrupting far-right infiltration of social media spaces and removing bad actors. Huh. Huh. Now, who could this person be? That's a bit weird, right? A mod for ContraPoints and another subreddit comes in and takes... Oh, we're going to get there, Gayfish. Don't you worry. It's about to get really complicated, everybody. You all... Some of you know this person. Some of you know this person. It's about to get real weird, okay? It's about to get real weird. Okay? By the way, let me just read the top comment. Uh, oh, sorry. You can't read the top comment because the top comment was deleted by this moderator. This moderator, whose name is Ephemer Ephrael Stern, okay? There you go, Ephrael Stern. Keep that name in mind, okay? Deleted the top comment. Second highest comment. Down to the center of the earth we go. This is just fucking comedy. I'm not sure I want to stay on this ride, but I can't seem to stop clicking the URLs. I'm starting to think this is all just a fever dream. I'm glad I'm not alone. This is wild. Awful comment. Definitely grounds for dismissal of this mod. That's Ephrael Stern. And more transparency around criteria for picking mods in the future. Side note, I do enjoy that the person who posted the original article regarding this animal sexual abuse had the username you trout fucker. Really just ties this whole thing together. 
internal issues. Here we go. Former top mod defends themselves, mistaken identity, etc., etc., etc. Now we have some of the antics over here. Work reform gains 350,000 members. Work reform mods are being investigated. People seem to be confusing one being a CTO with the one who's working for the banking industry. Call out of transphobia running rampant on work reform. Of course it is. Work reform is suspicious of brand new accounts that claim to be mods on anti-work. I don't really care about what happens on work reform because I don't give a shit about that subreddit. I don't really care. But guess what? Not quite over yet. Because, see, this user right here Ephrael Stern. Huh. Ephrael Stern. Look at that. Hmm. This is an interesting person. Hmm. Ephrael Stern. Who the hell could Ephrael Stern be? Well, it's interesting. Ephrael Stern also goes by another name. A name some of you may know. And that name is Bimbo Politics. Anybody heard of Bimbo Politics? Bimbo politics, uh, <laughs> you're about to see where this goes, okay? This is gonna, it's about to get real weird, okay? So, bimbo politics is a, uh, let's just say a, a Twitter user of, of minor repute, okay? But bimbo politics has some very interesting opinions, okay? Uh, I believe they call themselves an anarchist reformist which to me is a very silly thing to say. Um, and they also really, 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 really like to, um, really like to claim that they're an expert in things. Um, we'll get there. Don't worry. Uh, they claim they're like an expert moderator. They claimed that they were a, um, that they were a really important person on the, on the ContraPoint subreddit. And it turns out, well, look, they're not really actually that, much of an expert they just kind of said it and a lot of people just kind of you know went with it which i'm gonna be completely honest sounds like a really stupid idea but guess what everybody i got the receipts it, it she says she ran the contrapoints discord but i don't think that's actually true as far as i can tell ran the contrapoints discord means is on the mod team of the ContraPoints Discord. And there's some interesting, uh, you know, there's some interesting stuff that we got here. I'm going to show you a couple of these real quick, okay? Because um, because uh, it's been, it's been it, it gets really, really interesting real quick, okay? Let me just see if I can find this real quick. Okay, hold on. I want to find these ones real quick. So there's a lot of, um, there's a lot, I was given a lot of, um, I was given a lot of receipts here, okay? Like a lot of receipts, okay? I got fucking tons of them. Yeah, she's a mod. Yeah, she's just a mod. Um, and here you go. You can see right here. Hold on. Let me just show you real quick in case there's any worries that this is not the same person. Uh, real quick. Ephrael, Ephrael Stern with the same icon. Oops. Why can't I move this? Here, let me move my, uh, thing here. Ephrael Stern right here. This is the Bimbo Politics a avatar. They're openly the same person. Just so you all know, yes. The person who took over anti-work is indeed Bimbo Politics. And I have a fuckload, uh, just a, just an absolute fuck fuckload of this, okay? Now, there's some really weird, there's some really weird things. Um, one of the things that happens, and I'm trying to find this, uh, this, this link here. Um, yeah, this one's funny, okay? This one always makes me laugh. I'm gonna be blunt. Most of the people who whine about power mods are people who want to call black people the N-word without being told no. And they have created this unreality narrative to sell people because they don't want to say, they want to say, want to say what they want to get away with racism. If you have a problem with me literally taking over your space out of nowhere, you're just a racist. Unironically. Okay? Literally. And look, here's another example of people getting mad. So just keep in mind, the the anti-work subreddit, or sorry, the anti-work discord is explicitly a more radical space. Smash the state while we're at it. Sigh. Smash the state is like an ancient slogan. But, but, but remember, an anarchist that doesn't want to smash the state, guys. A reformist anarchist. We love them. We love those. 
And there's just a lot of this, okay? I'm literally an anarchist. I know I have been one for over 20 years. Also, I'm someone who believes in pragmatism, and I'm sad at how a lot of new anarchists are purists. You shouldn't be sighing at this if you're actually an anarchist. Well, this is the kind of purity thinking I'm talking about. I get why you all might be worried that I'm going to roll up every anarchist here and toss them to the curb and start telling people to vote for neoliberal ghouls or whatever. That's not the case. I'm an anarchist. I've been an anarchist for 20 years. Now, when I talk about extremism, please understand it's from a leftist lens. Any point on the political spectrum can be pulled in some very, very dark paths. The kinds of people being drawn to anti-work are people who probably match a high number of traits on that list. Okay, this right here, straight up, okay? The red flags in this post, okay? Any point on the political spectrum can be pulled in some very dark paths through some more, more prone than others. And the kinds of people being drawn to anti-work are people who probably match a high number of traits on that list in very deep ways. You know what that sounds like to me? No joke. That sounds like going, hey, my little, uh, my little FBI checklist here says you might be a terrorist. You, want, you got anything to say for yourself there? That is not someone that you should have as a mod of any place, ever. That's called being a fucking snitch. That's what we call being a motherfucking snitch right there. We all know about snitches, right? Snitches don't get snickers. That's how it works, right? Right? Snitches don't get snickers. That's the saying that everybody knows, right? I don't want them pulled in by grifters, cult leaders, crypto fascists, or other high control groups. For the past few months, my friends have been sounding the alarm on your subreddit because conspiracy theorists have been infiltrating the conversations, people who think COVID isn't real, and people who believe in QAnon. Hmm. Hmm. You know that this discord was founded on anarchist roots. Well, yeah, I'm literally an anarchist, an anarchist re reformist. <clears throat> But there's a couple of other things here, uh, real quick. Uh, let me see if I can find the right uh, person here. Here we go. Take a look at this. This is early. So this is a user that I actually reached out and talked to, okay? Um, I reached out and talked to... Uh, or sorry, no, no, no. This is not the person I talked to. My mistake. Uh, this is one of the users who uh, offered to send me these files. I got it from another user, okay? Okay. So this is somebody who shared their DMs with this file willingly. Just so you know, that's how I attain these DMs. This is before the Discord changed, okay? Just wait. Welcome to the fray. This whole thing is an absolute mess, and we should probably just give up the server to the members. Bimbo Politics says, I was actually going to request the Discord. And then Anti says, hey, hey wait, sorry? Yeah, I need to talk to the current server owner ASAP. Well, the current owner is stepping down at some point. I don't know who they'll hand the reins to. The Earl of Indecisiveness, a.k.a. White Pirate, the subreddit moderator, was found on our incest. I know. One, I'm one of the new Reddit mods tasked with, uh, uh, tasked with this. I'd rather fix the existing dis Discord. It's less effort. Well, I would also like to do that, but I'm willing to start over. I fixed co our contra points, so this is kind of what I do. Hmm. I'm not a fan. Oh, yeah. So then it goes, major things. Current admins are a major issue. Blah, blah, blah. I'm not a big fan of this unless mod needs to be ousted, which from what I hear was completely avoidable. Okay? There's a lot going on here. Shaking head. I'm not going to run. Like I said, fixing communities is what I do. Mars private ranting and their Twitter is private. That It was a privacy violation bringing that up. While I utterly disagree with the sentiment in that in that statement, the main point is we shouldn't have seen it. Uh, where do we go here? I will impose a formal process for censure and removal in the future. Okay? So, let's just get this straight. Let's take a moment. You've seen the receipts now. You've all seen the receipts? Yeah? Now, you've seen the receipts. So, what happened is that Bimbo Politics walked into the Reddit and said, <clears throat> Um, uh, 
you know, uh, official official community fixer here. Yeah, I just want to let you know. It looks like uh, looks like you got a little bit of a problem with your uh, Discord, uh, your, your carburation techniques. You might want to have, you know, I can fix that for you for a low low price of six hundred dollars. Just hand me the keys to your car, buddy. Come on over. I'll fix your car, your Discord carburetor. You've got it's all fucked up. It's totally it's like just you know. Come on in. That's what we had. Literally, it's fucking Morshoe. Fucking, yeah, I'm a fish, you know, I, I, you know, I, I modded on the ContraPoints Discord, so, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of, I'm kind of a big deal, guys. Guys, I'm, I'm kind of a big deal, okay? I'm kind of a big deal, everybody. Um, so, my scammer voice sounds, sounds like Pendulette, that's great. Uh, you know, I was just gonna ask for the reins to the server. Nobody knows who I am. I came out of nowhere. Nobody, literally, no one knows who I am. No one's willing to vouch for me. Uh, I ha I call myself a reformist anarchist. I talk about people being on lists. Being on lists because they have extremist red flags. Guys. That's fucking weird. Okay? The amount of red flags in... The, in just this one set of DMs is fucked. But guess what? Bimbo Politics did this for other people as well. D Bimbo Politics approached other people saying, uh, <laughs> look at this. Here we go right here. Watch this. Take a look at this. Hold on. Look at this, guys. Wait, so you're now the server owner and you weren't even a mod until recently? Mars was removed based on a number of worrisome behaviors, namely being at odds with both admins and other mods in the community. Yes, that's correct. Due to events that happened on anti-work, I was brought in to help fix things and prevent that and anything like it from happening again. There's a, a, a set of deep systemic issues with this community at large that needs to be solved, namely extremist entryism. Sometimes... And then somebody says here, this seems a little weird. Shouldn't someone already in this community, an uncontroversial mod, take that position? And if you wanted to help, maybe you would just step in as another mod rather as uh, than as a, a literal server owner? What do you mean by extremely extremist entryism? Is there a fash problem? Sometimes outside help is required, much like calling the fire department. So... Imagine for a second that imagine for a second that tomorrow I booted up my stream and instead of me there was someone you didn't know at all you've never heard of them no one you know has heard of them and they just go and you go why are you on Demon Mama's stream did you steal Demon Mama's stream key and they go sometimes outside help is required it would be a shame if somebody labeled you as an entryist, wouldn't it? It would be a shame if you showed up on a list of extremists, wouldn't it? Guys, that's fucking weird. That's fucking really weird. That's fucking extremely weird behaviors. And you should be weirded out by that, by the way. Here's another one. Oh my god. I love this, okay? Here we go. Another metaphor another metaphor. You needed a surgeon and all you had was medics. And then someone here posts a, a joke. I'm doing my part. The, you know what this this is a joke saying that oh sorry, my camera's covering this. Here we go. We'll move my camera over here. I'm doing my part. This is a reference to uh mocking fascists. I got your point. I just don't agree with it. Uh, and then down here we go. Uh, there's a certain amount of irony to describing workplace structures and how they're meant to be maintained in a community ostensibly dedicated to abolishing those types of social relations. You can't abolish order. Order is an emergent part of being human in a society. We must restore order. Is if is Ephriel Stern a Fed? This is literally how Freds break into an anarchist communities. I have no evidence to suggest that that Bimbo Politics is a Fed. However, I think personally that Bimbo Politics likes to, at the very least, LARP like a Fed because 
every single fed red flag I've ever seen in my entire life are showing up in these logs. But I have no evidence, and I will reassert, I have no evidence to suggest that they are. I do find it very, very sussy. I find it very sussy that they come in and immediately start talking about lists, establishing order, and that they come in out of nowhere. Nobody really seems to know them outside of them being a, a weird Twitter presence, and that their first goal is to eliminate extremism from, a, from an anti-work subreddit. That does indeed smell very fishy to me. Let's just say it doesn't pass the drama mama stink test, okay? It really doesn't. You used to be one of her drones? Listen, let's not bring that into it, okay? Smells very strange, the schniff test. Here we go. Here's more examples of this. I'm an anarchist. Your questions show a lack of understanding of what real extremism experts consider extremism. I'm a, listen, excuse me. I'll have you know your, your, your Discord's carburetor is sure is letting in a whole lot of fucking extremists. Don't you, you want to get that? Listen, I got to tell you, your, uh, your catalytic converter has got to be changed. It's only 600 bucks and I'll change that fucking catalytic converter for you. Make sure... I'm an expert. What can I, I'm an expert. I'm a big deal. What can I say? I'm a big deal. Who are you? Can I see your license? Do you have a, do you have a, like a history or resume? I, I modded for ContraPoint subreddit. <sighs> and then that person got banned, by the way. So, something interesting happened, okay? Something very interesting happened. Which is... That a vote was held, okay? This is where it's going to get really weird, okay? So, Bimbo Politics uh, invited all of the current mods to a vote. And the vote was, do we want to keep Bimbo Politics as the server owner? Okay? The vote was taken. And guess what? Everybody who voted against Bimbo Politics was vented. So the vote was simply a test to find out who was loyal to Bimbo Politics and who wasn't. A literal... Yes. Yes. You can ask multiple of the former mods. I have, I have received... Uh, a communication from multiple of the former mods that that is exactly what happened. Literally a coup. I mean, of a discord. Now that's pretty weird, isn't it? That's pretty weird, isn't it? Hmm. Now, I want to show you something a little funny. <clears throat> Hmm. 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 Now, I have never talked to Bimbo Politics. I've never mentioned Bimbo Politics uh, uh, until this stream. And I feel like it's important uh, to dispel potential biases as this is a drama mama segment and in drama mama i try to do my best to present the drama uh without like uh without you know first before giving any readings but i gotta say the blocking was a bit weird um and i was wondering you know i'm like mm, i really wonder you know why the hell this person would have a problem with me and i don't know is the honest answer but do you know who else? You know who else Bimbo Politics has a big problem with? Doe. In fact, somebody might know that, uh, uh, some people here might already know that um, Bimbo Politics just spent the last couple of days uh, tweeting about how Doe is an eco terrorist. Hmm. Hmm. 
I wonder, you know, it's very weird to me that the person who mysteriously appears in a place, presents themselves as an expert, takes over the place, purges all people who disagree, also claims that they're an anarcho-reformist, mentions people being on lists, mentions trying to purge extremists from spaces, and then starts calling other known lefties on the internet terrorists. Hmm. You know, everybody, I'm getting a lot of sussy from this. Yeah, there's the tweet. Let's get it right up here. Let's show. Let's show it, shall we? There you go. I regret to inform you that the deer person is an eco-terrorist. Hmm. So, let's take a look real quick. Before we go any further, you know, I just wanted to dispel that. I just wanted to let you know that this, I, keep in mind, just so that we're clear, I have never had any issues with this person. And to my knowledge, neither has Doe. All of this occurred after the anti-work subreddit collapsed, after Bimbo Politics purged the subreddit, and before, obviously, this stream. So, it's a little bit weird to me that this person who was just very, very involved in the complete and utter dissolution and takeover and de-radicalization of a pretty major community also somehow going after us. Isn't that kind of weird? Did you feel a little bit weird about that? I just wanted to dispel before we go to the end of this little segment. Okay. So what's the state of anti-work right now? Well, this is anti-work right now, okay? Uh, anti-work has, as far as I can tell, um, basically turned into a, a, a watered-down version of its previous self um there's some posts here stop fetishizing small business life is a bit a lot a lot more meme posts a lot of meme posts um and and uh and still a lot of users a lot of a lot of subscribers because a lot of people didn't sub didn't unsubscribe but the number of active people has gone way down and the quality of the threads, from what I hear, has also gone down. Now, I don't really care much about a random subreddit. And you all know that I've covered uh, anti-work. And in my segments covering anti-work, I explicitly stated multiple times that... Um, uh, I've stated multiple times that, um, uh, that, uh, uh, that, that you can't make a Reddit movement. That doesn't happen. You can gauge some interest by something like a subreddit, but you can't really make a Reddit movement. There's not enough. There's no. There's no actual connections there. Um, if you didn't have the receipts, this would sound like a Pepe Silvia conspiracy. I know, but I always have the receipts. I fucking always have the receipts. Always, every single time. And you know, I always have the receipts. And, and yeah, so as of right now, anti-work um, just seems to be in a, in a, uh, in a, in a, in a state of, uh, of disarray. The, the uh, viral, virality of it has totally fallen apart and all of its reputation on the internet has been completely destroyed. The discord is totally unreliable. All of the people who were originally involved in the discord have basically ditched so the community is literally not the same community it was. Community totally hollowed out. Mods from work reform, and a very a a very weird, uh, uh a, a a very weird power mod. Presenting themselves as an expert, takes over and does a purge. 
Guys, anti-work is fucking dead, is what this means, okay? So, anti-work is dead. That there, Whatever it was is gone. It blew up. It got fucking torpedoed, and whatever remains is, a, is just an empty shell of what it once was, quite literally. And there's no trust to be had. And that's the thing. Movements, a movement, a political movement is built on trust. You kind of like what happened to RGR's Discord, indeed. Um, but movements have to be built on trust. And subreddits, ha you can't build trust easily in a subreddit. It's very difficult to build that. Especially, and, and no, hold on. <clears throat> It, it's very difficult to build that, and it is impossible when things like this happened. Wow, Bimbo Politics used this event to grab a lot of power, didn't she? Yes, she did. I mean, power. Okay? Power. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that. What I was trying to say is, um, what I was trying to say is, uh, some of you may remember me talking about when, uh, after January 6th, or uh, near near to January 6th, um, the Donald Trump, Donald.win, um, underwent a very strange and very similar mod incident. Um, it's, uh, it, it, you, you guys remember that? Where all of the mods suddenly disappeared and then they changed hosts and there was no way to verify? It, and it's weird because some of the mods had the same name but there was no way to actually verify if those mods were the same people because they moved off Reddit and to a different website. So there was literally no way to know for sure. No one in the no one in the comments, no one anywhere could know for sure if those people were what who they said they were. And something very similar has occurred here, which is that all of the original people who built the subreddit the people who were communicating with the community before are gone. And in their place are people who claim to be looking out for them, but who ultimately nobody knows where they came from. And they took over very aggressively. I showed you guys the DMs that was like, I need to speak to the server owner immediately. You all need help. I want you to give me the server. Look. Any, every, I just want real quick. Just let's take one second real quick, okay? Real quick. You, right now, you viewer, you imp in the audience, okay? If you were a mod on a subreddit, any subreddit, and some fucking random user that you've never heard of scroll, strolls up, you've never heard of, strolls up to you and says, I want you to give me the keys to your server so I can help you fix it. Are you going to say yes? What if some random person walks up to you and says, hey, let me show you a cool thing you can do with your phone. Can I have your phone? Hey, let me see your, I want to show you a cool trick I can do with your wallet. Did she? Let's see if I can see this. Here, let's take a look. Oh boy, here we go. Reddit moderation in one flow part flow chart. User post rule breaking content. User gets banned. I was voicing my opinion. The difference between a opinion and hate speech is explained. Sorry, that was wrong of me. User is given a chance. You're just a bunch of SJW losers. Expletives. User is muted. User lies elsewhere on the site. User second user reads the lies. Cycle. This indicates somebody who fucking hates all users. Always hate speech. Weird, isn't it? Weird how bimbo politics literally calls anyone who disagrees with her an extremist and a racist. Hmm. By the way, if your answer to the previous question about whether you would hand your wallet, car keys, or, or the keys to your Discord server over to others, if your answer was fuck no, you're not a dupe. Unfortunately, it appears that everyone involved with anti-work because they're mostly children are dupes cool trick huh the trick is you lose your discord and all trust is completely destroyed and the place becomes completely useless because you don't know if there are literal feds or if there are literal nazis on your moderation team because you don't know who your moderation team is 
All right, everybody. So now is my favorite part, okay? Everybody's favorite part of Drama Mama. We've laid out the narrative of what happened. We've laid out the receipts, okay? And now it's time for us to talk about the conclusions. It's been a long case, this one. Been going on for a long time. One of the biggest I've ever taken. The only one bigger I think I can ever think of was the Ray Fisher situation. With the fake Frosty the Snowman, brought to you by Jason Momoa. The fake movie that never existed, that WB made up to pull attention away from the allegations of racism on their sets. Well, I hadn't seen anything this big since that. But along came this whole situation with anti-work. You know, it tested even my mettle. To see a community like that, with such bright, young, radical individuals, motivated to change the world for the better, usurped by a bunch of startup CEOs? And then there's this bimbo politics dame. You know, at first I just thought that she was any other user. But then I saw the booger wall. And then I realized this isn't just some other person on the internet. This is a moderator. Reddit moderator, no less. One that's let the power go straight to her head. And I went and looked a little deeper. I had to scratch the surface. The mystery was calling to me, you know? So I looked in. What did I find? A whole lot of dirt. You see? You can't just trust anyone, you know? You can't just take people at their word on the internet. People will say anything. If you can believe it, people do just go on the internet and tell lies all the time. Sometimes they come in and tell you they're an expert on extremism identification without ever providing any sort of evidence of that. Sometimes they tell you that their work experience is nine years as a mod on one of the biggest uh, discords on, on Discord but that also is notorious for having a fuckload of mods. So does it really matter? Isn't that kind of the equivalent of just being a McDonald's moderator? McDonald's is the biggest food company, but if somebody claims they were a cook for the biggest restaurant in the world, and you found out it was McDonald's, you might not be very impressed, would you? Well, I'm not impressed, that's for sure. I'm not impressed with what I've seen at all. In fact, if you were to ask me, smells a lot more fishy than anything I was even able to uncover. And I gotta say, I find it kind of weird that the moment I started looking into all this, I find myself blocked by that same booger wall having power mod tripping on a perceived political win. I gotta say, it uh, set off my alarm bells. But unfortunately, the trail's gone cold. There's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to go except to witness bimbo politics in her natural environment, which apparently is going on the internet and telling the nicest people you've ever met that they're eco-terrorists openly and publicly while claiming to be a leftist and also regularly threatening people with lists and also telling people that they're an anti-extremist who goes into spaces and takes them over and then purges them of all of their previous users, leaving all of the users completely incapable of establishing a line of trust. And I don't know, nothing really I can say much more about that. I feel like that type of evidence speaks for itself. So maybe the case has gone cold, but I think we know what we've got on our hands here, don't we? The difference between the efforts taken by bimbo politics and the stake is play is hilarious to me. Guys, straight up, let's just be real. I'm going to turn off the music for just a second, and I'm going to be completely real here. Remember how I said that this is the most nuclear soy that you've ever fucking experienced? Was I wrong? Was I wrong? And, and the bimbo politics thing is the embodiment of it. Bimbo politics is like, like 
blasting soy out at a level that's like it's like it's like a fucking plutonium bomb. It's like there's like a you you see it and you just go ah and you burn away. I've never seen an individual more soy than someone who who pulls off like who thinks they've pulled off a giant coup by going to a subreddit of a bunch of clueless children and pulling the wool over their eyes and fucking them over. And then also pretend it goes around being like yeah, I'm kind of a big deal, you know. Got uh 9 years of doing it for free. Do you guys, you know what we should bring back? We should bring back they do it for free. And you know why we should do that? Because my mods are immune because I actually give my mods money. Not, I don't pay them a salary, but we do mod days. And that's more than most people can say. And I do pay my lead mod. So, you know, we should bring that back though. Bimbo Politics, uh, who I cannot confirm whether or not they have a crusty wall full of their own boogers that they could not get rid of because they were too busy power modding nine different discords full of children uh, and claiming that they're an extremism export. I cannot confirm whether or not they have ruined a wall of their apartment by sticking their fucking boogers to it like some sort of troglodyte. Can't confirm, but I'm just going to say that there is a high likelihood of that being the case. I know people IRL who have booger walls. I know. They're usually Reddit moderators. Like bimbo politics. But, uh, I don't know, guys. I think, I feel like bimbo politics doesn't have pretty much anywhere to go right now. Uh, can you imagine taking the, um, can you imagine, like, your great win being inheriting a subreddit that is now associated with a bombed interview, uh, incest and dog fucking? What's a booger wall? Well, just think about it. Think, imps! Think! Don't look up booger wall on Google, by the way. Wait, who fucked a dog? The Wait, that was one of the things we went over. A bunch of the mods were posting on, like, incest and zoophilia reddits, and that immediately got exposed, because of course it did. Here's what I want you all to do. I want you all to realize... This right here, this face, is the face of Reddit soy booger walling, okay? Straight up. And if you think I'm wrong, holy fuck. Guess what? The mods made all the receipts public. So if you have any worries about any of the claims I've made here, guess what? The mods made them public. You guys can see the logs for yourself, and you'll understand why I say... That bimbo politics is the, the fucking avatar of Reddit soy booger wall power mod power tripping. And also was key in ensuring that there was no possible way for anti-work to bounce back from this disaster. So the lesson of this episode of Drama Mama is we did it, Reddit. We did it. We solved work. Thank goodness. Thank goodness that it was... Thank God for the fucking Reddit mods and booger and booger politics. Thank fucking goodness, everyone. We did it, Reddit. We did it. Nobody has to go to their job anymore. We did it. Eh, what did we accomplish? Nothing. We've only embarrassed the, the name of anti-work. We've only managed to take the first time that the ideas of anti-work meaningfully reach a platform of that level at in this current political milieu and turned it into a steaming pile of, of shit whose face on the top of that is booger politics. Sorry, bimbo politics. Imagine! Just hold on, everybody. Take a second and think about how stupid you have to be to go to be like, yeah, I want to take over and put my name and face all over the place that just fucking bombed an interview on Fox News that was that was fucking getting roasted on every corner of the Internet. I want to slap my face on that. Which is why I have to go. I have to say, is it that bimbo politics is fucking stupid? Or do they have an ulterior motive? And the answer is, we will never know. 
However, I will say, I will say, uh, uh, <clears throat> I will say that bimbos are dumb, not stupid. Okay. There's a difference. Okay. Bimbos are dummies. They're, they're like, they're, they're nice. They're, they're silly. They're not fucking stupid. But bimbo politics is fucking stupid. And also may or may not have a crusty, yellowing booger wall for the times that they can't get to the tissues while they're power modding the nine reddits that they've taken over. Oh, it looks like Bimbo Politics is mad at me right now. Nice. Good. Loser. Uh, yeah, by the way, I do think just, just, just so that we can dispel all, uh, you know, all, uh, airs, I, I genuinely think Bimbo Politics is a giant piece of shit and that no one should fucking trust this person. I would never, for the fucking love of God, trust somebody who walks up and says, yeah, I'm an expert on fixing fucked up discords. Give me the keys to your fucking house. No, dude, fucking, are you guys serious? This is why, by the way, just so you know, this is why you need me. This is why you all need me. Because if it wasn't for me, who the fuck does this shit on the internet? Idubs used to do fucking content cop and shit. What? Who else does this shit? You all fucking, you guys fucking need me. Because otherwise, you dumb little internet kids are gonna walk around falling for all this stupid shit.